So thank you very much to Karen Bevan and Tracy Minot, who are from the co-op. And uh, Karen is going to explain the difference between the co-ops for us. So I'm going to hand over to you, if I may, Karen, to start the session. You may. Good afternoon, everybody. And I'm sorry if I'm going to be sniffing myself through this session a little bit. I've got really bad hay fever, as I'm sure some of you have on this call today. It seems very high at the moment. Um, so I am the Member and Community Relations Officer for Central England Co-op. But we've also got Tracy on the call that's going to speak to you after, who is from Co-op Group. And we know that it's quite confusing um, the different co-ops for people, especially when they're looking to apply for grants. So Central England Co-op is a card. If you, I don't know if you can see this. Unfortunately, mine is orange because I'm a colleague, so I'm identified differently. But a Central England Co-op um, members card will have the honeycomb on it and it will be white. And if you look in the bottom left hand corner, if you've got cards, it will tell you which co-op you belong to. Tracy's card is different. Tracy's card is a blue card. So that's the blue card with the co-op um, in white, I believe. But um, Tracy will be able to sort of show you that. So when you are applying to a co-op fund, you need to just check the area that you're in. So for Central England Co-op, I cover the sort of NN14, NN16 postcodes. So that sort of involves uh, Kettering, Corby, Thrapston, Rawns, Moulton, Desborough areas. But further into Northamptonshire, it will be co-op group, which will come into Traces, and Tracy will speak about that a little bit later. If you're still unclear, you can always, if you just search in Google for the co for your nearest co-op, it will tell you if that's a co-op group corp, um, store or whether it's a Central England co-op store. But those of you that are members and got members cards, it, uh, if you have a look on it, it, it will tell you which co-op um, that you belong to. So just be really, really mindful when you're looking at applications, if you want to apply for the co-op that you've got the right co-op and the right application form. And that is because we do slightly differ in, in how we process our community dividend forms. So um, for Central England Co-op, and when I finish my chat, that's, um, I'll put it in the chat, um, the link for it. It's a very, very simple application to complete, but there is a little bit of criteria around it. So the first criteria is that you must be a full member of Central England Co-op for at least six months. Now, if you're not directly a member yourself, quite often, if you speak to other people that are involved in your project, um, they, they will probably be a member of the Co-op. So you can always use their co-op number in your application. So um, ap applicants must also really clearly identify that the project or the activity that they are applying for is sustainable and is for the benefit of the community as well. Anything that you do uh, within your application that we like you to at least um, submit two quotes with that so we can get an idea of, of what the costings look like. Um, also, we won't pay out for training or, or salaries or wages. Um, so just, just be mindful of that too. Um, recipients of the grant. So if you are fortunate that, that you are awarded the grant, um, we will ask for sort of pho uh, photographs and progress on projects and um, we might ask you um, to take part in some PR campaign on our behalf as well, um, just to sort of evidence and show how we're supporting the communities where we trade. Now, the typical grants uh, that you can apply for are anything from, uh, well, you can apply for anything up to £5,000, but the, the more typical payouts are around 2000 unless 
it's a really big project um, that falls just within the five thousand pounds then then we will have a look at it but you also you've got to be mindful that you are going to be up against a lot of other applicants as well so i would say that um, if you're not successful the first time don't let that put you off and apply again and i do know that um, we are more regular because we used to meet quarterly but we're actually going to be meeting i think every other month the community dividend committee so we're going to be turning those grants around a lot quicker than we did before the project must be consistent with the values and principles of a co-op if you if you don't know what those values and principles uh, co-op values and principles are you, again you can just google that but it's a lot of the stuff that you guys are doing the, the very fact that you're on here looking for grants to support community uh, activities uh, demonstrates the co-op values and some of them are around self-help self-responsibility caring for others concern for the community and i would actually say that every single person that's on this call today is ticking all those boxes because that's why you're here um, you're looking for grants um, so also if you are successful with with the community dividend you you must have, um, have spent it in the first 12 months so you can't really sit on it uh, for for any length of time and then the only other uh, last criteria for us is that we actually won't part fund something. So, for instance, if um, if we were say wanting to purchase a community a community bus or a community mini bus, well, obviously that's going to cost a lot more than five thousand pounds. So we wouldn't part fund something like that. We look um, we look to fund um, projects in their entirety really so what i'll do is i will put the link to the community dividend um, in the chat and then after this meeting um i'll also get our leaflet over um to corella so she can get that out to you but um as i say it's probably just well easier really just to apply online so if i put in the link in there it it will take you straight to it and you can have a look at it so happy to take any questions. Do you want to do, Corella, do you want to do interview, sorry, questions at the end or, or shall I take questions now? Should we do them separately because it's yeah. different areas and you are yeah. slightly different, aren't you? Yeah. So we've got a question here from yeah. Hazel. Um, yeah. Hazel, do you want to say your question? Can't see Hazel. Hi, hi, Karen. Hi. Hi there. Um, yeah, I just wondered, you said about the um, that you can't <clears throat> claim for training, uh, sorry, salary or wages, but can yeah. you can you um, include costs for delivering the project? So say if there was a couple of days that was needed to administrate the project, can you apply for that staff cost? I haven't really seen that before, to be honest. Um, mm. all, all I've ever really seen is is for, for, you know, for instance, the sort of things that we support is when I think about it is, is like equipment or it could be uh, disabled mm. toilets or a new kitchen. So to be, to be absolutely honest with you, I haven't seen anything um, that covers sort of um, prep for delivery is what you're saying, isn't it? Mm. But oh, yeah. what I, sorry. Yeah, yes, that's right, yes. Yes, so, but what I will do is I will go back to our community dividend chair uh, of that meeting and I will ask the question to see if, um, if that's ever been paid out. But uh, okay. I usually get a summary of, of everything that's been awarded in my region and I've never, I haven't seen for planning um for delivery but i will ask the question for you and i'll, I'll come back through corella for you right. okay thank you i did have a second question as well okay um, what type of organization do you need to be to apply yeah you do you do really need to be have charitable status okay. so we wouldn't pay out a community dividend to a private entity when you say charitable status do you need to be a registered charity or can you be or community interest company or um or cooperative right. or organization like that yeah okay 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel. Um, Sheila's got a question. Are there any restrictions on the type of group? On the type of group? Yes. Do you want to elaborate on that, yes. Sheila? Sheila, are you able to unmute? <coughs> yes, I meant things like would it apply to uh, guiding and scouting groups or things like that, as well as because they are sort of charitable, um, as well as obviously charities. Yeah. Yep, that's a really good question. Yes, yeah, so so uh, yes, we've um, we've seen guiding and scouting groups uh, receive community dividends, as we have seen uh, community football uh, clubs as well, uh, uh, support with equipment, um, because it's, because it's, you know, it's, it's a benefit to the community, it's sustainable, it's getting people out, it's helping, you know, with health and well-being, keeping people fit, so them sort of organisations we will pay out for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I've got a similar sort of on similar vein from Holly um, and she's asking about not funding a salary, but funding for a worker to do particular sessions. Yeah, again, um, that sort of, um, yeah, it, it falls a little bit within the preparation for delivery question as well, doesn't it? So, um, could you just elaborate on what sort of session um, you're thinking about? Holly, are you able to unmute? If she can't unmute, do you want to write it in the chat? In the chat, in the chat. What she was particularly asking about is uh, paying for an organisation, paying an organisation for somebody's time to come and do an activity. Sorry, just say that again. I was I'm just, just asking whether you would pay for an organisation to, you could pay an organisation to come in and do something. For some time yeah again i've not yeah, really again, seen that because it, it seen sort that. of almost falls within a salary um but but again but sorry again. i'm getting some feedback sorry, yeah, sheila sorry could you mute sheila, again um but what again i will i will ask the question i haven't seen that come through but but i will clarify that and ask and ask the question thank you okay um, Sheila, can you pop your question into the, the, the um, chat box, please? Becky. Becky says, I think I'm a member in a different area to the area in which my organisation operates as I live in a different area. What happens then? Do we have to become a member in the specific area? That's sort of a question about where your, your project is and where you live and who has that card that organization or that membership card yeah so so yeah you would need some it would need to be delivered within our trading area so you would need the card um yeah that's a, yeah so yeah it needs to it needs to be within the trading area because because the bit is what we're doing is supporting the communities where we trade. So if you if you lived out of the area, I think what you'd have to do is find somebody that's involved in the project that that lives within the within the area. Thank you. I hope make, that does that make that sense? Answer. Yeah. I hope that answers that, Becky, for you. Um, we've got um, Jay Hunt. Could a parish council apply for a grant? I haven't seen parish councils um, receive funding from us because I think that uh, we would look that the parish council would have some funding um, to support their communities. 
Thank you. I suppose if it was an outreach project and it was very different, <clears throat> um, you could try, but uh, I haven't seen a parish council be awarded a community dividend fund. Thank you very much. Um, Becky's asking another one about this eligibility. Is a non-profit company limited by guarantee able to apply? Not for profit, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Phil's got a good one. What percentage of applications are successful? Yeah, well, that is a really good one because... Um, it all depends how many applications that we have. So, um, and uh, you know, and since the pan pandemic, um, that's been been really interesting. At the at the beginning of the pandemic, we we changed our community dividend to 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 ab absolutely support that. So we had had a lot of applications, especially around food poverty. Um, so. Um, they were all very, very successful. I would say, because I, I do, I do get a summary of them. I would say probably on average, sixty to seventy percent get through. Okay, but but again, it all depends on what you're up against. Okay, thank you very much. So continue putting your questions into the chat box, but I'd like to pass over to Tracy oh. now so she can have give her talk, her little session, and then we'll have more questions afterwards. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Tracy. I work for the cooperative group. Um, so I am what we call a member pioneer coordinator. So I have a group of 10 people that cover Northamptonshire that look after um, clusters, um, around Northampton, and they're lined to our cooperative stores. So um, each member pioneer is, is given a little cluster and within that cluster, they have a set of co local causes, which I'll talk about in a second. Now, Karen put me on the spot a little bit because she had her card and my card's downstairs, so I couldn't run downstairs, but I have this. <laughs> so, so that's our card, it looks like this, but obviously as a card. So um, you'll see that on the front door or obviously a lot of our stores have been branded now, the, the blue color. So you will know the difference and we do, actually have a lot of stores in Northamptonshire. So my basic area runs from um, Long Buckby, right across really the A45 through Northampton and right out to Wellingborough and Rushton and that, that way, so in Finden. So it's, it's quite a large sort of patch. So there's a couple of things I really wanted to talk to you about today. So the first one is what we call our local cause fund. So if any of you are members of the co-op, um, it's basically when you have a membership card, every time that you spend any money on a cop branded product, um, you'll receive a percentage back, but also your local cause will receive 1% back of that money. Now, the local causes, um, they are any group or charity um, that apply in the May, uh, in the May, it starts in October and they run for a year. So there's three in each of the clusters um, and they, could, they can basically get up to sort of, normally it's about 2,000, 3,000 pounds per year. Um, they have, um, they, the criteria for that is that you have to fit our three pillars. Now it's slightly different than, um, than Karen. We have three pillars and these three pillars are fair access to food, um, fair access to well-being and fair access to education and uh, for young people, employment for young people. So when you do a local cause fund application, you have to make sure that obviously what you're going to apply for goes within those three pillars. Now, unfortunately, this year we've just ended the applications for the October time, the end of October to start, but it's something we, we do on a yearly basis. So it's worth thinking about if you are a group or a charity or a cause that would like to apply for next year. Um, we, it's normally we've had um, just over 10,000 applications this year and we'll probably have, which works out about 3,000, 4,000 um, causes that we'll be supporting throughout the country. So there's no sort of 
obviously you have to be um, a charity or non-profit organization um, but as long as you fit that criteria then obviously you can apply it doesn't matter how big or small the group is or how big or small the charity is so that's the first thing um, so what we do um, just a point so my member pioneers what they will do is they support you if you become a local cause so they will help you go into store talk about your cause they will um, put you on social media get the word out there so you get more of that one percent um, back for your cause as well so um, there's a lot that my team can do to help you if if obviously you apply for that next year so the other thing we also do as well is something called a community donations policy so um, we have basically a pot of money and um, each week we have a set pot of money throughout the country that we can assign or you can apply for um, up to £200 per store um, for anything that fits in with those three pillars that I talked about. So your food, your well-being and your education um, for young children. Now, these applications can go through my member pioneers. They'd be more than happy to help you if you're thinking about it. So it can be basically anything. So if you want, to, maybe you're a food share partner that wants a fridge because you haven't got one, you know, we can apply for you to get maybe £200 towards that. The maximum we can apply for in this fund is £600. We can get three stores to bond together to get some more money. And the application is really quick so you basically put it in one week it's looked at that week um it's yes or no the following week and then the following week after that you'll get a check basically so it's pretty quick so if there's anything sort of you need maybe a bit of equipment or anything like that then you, you know you can apply talk to a member pioneer or myself and basically you can apply through, and through the stores it's really easy process they do it all for you on a tablet and it's gone it's sorted um, so, yeah, so that's basically what we do with regards to funding. Um, is there any questions? I've probably like bombarded you. <laughs> I've got anything in the chat, but could I ask a question? Um, how yeah. do you contact the pioneers? OK, so I can obviously get, get you obviously some leaflets out, Corella, and I can get you... Um, my email address obviously can go through me and then I can, the appropriate, I can get you in touch with the appropriate member pioneer for that particular area, which would make it a lot easier rather than you having to find out yourself, so. Right, um, so for people, because this is for the whole of Northamptonshire, people from, are from all over the place. Um, is there somewhere that everybody can go to find the leaflet? Is it on your website? Um, no, not at the moment, because we don't, what we do, the community donations policy is really something that we, um, if we see something that might need a little injection of cash, we will say, we will talk to somebody about it. So it's not something we go, we, we advertise on our website, but I have got some, some leaflets and stuff that I can send out um, and some links to some stuff I've done as well. So I'm happy to do that. Thank you. So really, it's going into your local co-op store then? Yeah, it's a really easy way to do it. Is that really, right? really easy. Really easy. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm looking at the questions now. Um, Steve Gibson, um, if successful for a small community don donation, can we apply again for another? Not in the same calendar year, I'm afraid. Thank you. Um, Marion, how often can organisations apply in a given period? Same again, once once a year, once a year, yeah. Once a year, yeah, okay. Sorry, um, can I, I'm going to confuse everybody and just say in Central England Co-op, it's two years <laughs> on our criteria. <laughs> so one year for the yeah. Co-op group, two years for Central England Co-op. Okay, thank you for that, Karen. Two years if you're in the central area. Um, Sheila has said, so would you... I think you answered this. So would you part fund something? Yes. Yeah, we will. So basically, if um, so, it depends on if we're talking about the local cause fund. Yes, definitely. All we need to know is how much you roughly want to raise. We, we can't guarantee you'll raise that money, but we'll we'll help you be the cause that people will choose to put their one percent back in. Um, and it can be it's basically it can be part funded for a bigger project. So for the, from that 
um, perspective and also you get a payout in the April and then a payout in the October as well so you can start your um, whatever you want to do um, earlier on rather than the wait for the whole year for the money to come through. Um, with regards to the community donations, yes, it can still be part funded. We just need to have an idea of what you want and the cost of it. And that's it. Great, thank you. Um, you're being asked for your details. Um, Karen, you've put yours in. And so Tracy, I don't know if you've already done yours. No. So that people, people would like to contact you directly, if that's possible, your emails. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Hope I haven't missed anything. There you go. Thank you, Tracy. Okay, no more questions? Well, thank you both very much indeed for joining us today. And I've got several comments here about how helpful people have found your, your talk because there was some confusion about who to apply for. And it is slightly confusing, isn't it? But I think we've, we've got the picture now. So thank you very much indeed for, for doing the session today. Um, thank you everybody for joining us. As I said, this um, session will be uploaded to the North Northamptonshire Council um, website um, so that you can listen to it again. Also, you'll find on there the online questionnaire, which we'd love you to complete for us so that we can plan next year's funding fair. And if you would like to be entered into the prize draw, don't forget to put your email address onto that questionnaire as well. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you. Goodbye for now. Bye.